Yo, Elliot, I'm going through thou shalt fast command right now. I think that's a the second lesson. My longest fast so far was around 36 hours a year ago. Apart from that, I'm doing intermittent fasting daily. I would like to try to do three fasts, however. One thing I'm concerned about is my weight. My height is six foot, I mean six foot tall, and he weighs 140 pounds. I'm not anorexic, and I don't have any issues with appetite. I simply have a fast metabolism, and it was always hard for me to gain weight. Judging by the way I look at some uh, exposition of my abs, I would say I have probably around 15 to 20% body fat. Probably a lot less than that, I, I would imagine, if your abs are showing. He says, if I would fast for three days, it would be a detox, clarity for the mind, uh, and getting used to being in ketosis. However, I'm trying to build strength and muscle right now, and I feel more like eating meat and working out than fasting. I'm also trying to reduce further carbs in my diet, to eventually get into ketosis just by eating properly. Do you think I should focus now on my training, doing IF, eating in a keto way, and waiting with longer fasting for the future? Or do you think three days of fasting will not be a problem for me and it's still worth doing? So the important question here is why are you fasting? And it's, it's the case for all of us. So for example, right now is the season of Lent. In the season of Lent, Catholics and some Christians fast, right? And there are many different ways to fast, but one of the traditional ways to fast is not to eat until three o'clock. Now, if you see it for what it is, which is an act of devotion, it's an act of penance, right? So it's a way of mortifying the flesh and removing focus from me, right? So during Lent, it's actually, there's multiple parts of Lent, but it's, it's self-denial, but also charity. So that which you don't consume, we're expected to give, right? So say, you know, uh, uh, you, 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 you're saving $100 a week because you're not eating so much, you give that away to someone else who doesn't have to eat, right? It's all about selflessness, Right? Remember we were talking before about humility, it's about thinking about yourself less, right? This is about, it's not even about what we get. Darren says discipline, and you're right, you're going to develop discipline, but I want you to transcend even that, right? Because we're thinking in terms of the virtues I develop, and that's good, that's really good. But let's get, let's go a little bit lower. It's not even about me, it's an offering. It's an offering. Right. That's what Lent is. And, and I know I got a lot of Muslims here. That's what Ramadan is. I think that's coming up here pretty soon. It's an offering. If we lament during fasting about, oh, I'm going to lose my gains. And the whole time you're fasting, you're like, oh, what can I do so I don't lose my gains? You're actually now thinking too much about yourself. It's a penance, meaning it's a punishment. Right. It's like take the beating. And I know that's hard, and, and it's, it is for itself. It's its own end, right? Because I know that's so hard for us to understand because we live in such a fleshy world and we have, we're, we're, we're so focused on the flesh. We're so dazzled by it and, and the whole culture just focuses on it. So it's hard for us to do anything for its own sake, right? You can't, just, you can't even work out for its own sake. Right. Because it's like, well, I like exercising. Right. I, which, you know, doing it for its own sake, there's value to it. But there's always what am I going to get? What am I going to get? What am I going to get? Right. What am I going to get? Well, how is this going to work? I was reading a book about relationships this morning, too. And in the relationship uh, book, she, this woman was talking about how with dating, it's about dating, you know, it's a book written for young women about how to relate to young men in dating. I'm, you know, I'm working out this whole courting thing and she 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 kind of admonishes us by saying that why and she's speaking to women why is it that we always have to be in a relationship for what i get out of it right and she's trying to change their their views on relationships especially for women right because most of us think like women today just to be honest and i'm not saying i'm free from that right i grew up as a blue pill beta male effeminate bitch, just like most of us uh, i'm just figuring this stuff out now that i'm middle-aged <laughs> Uh, but women, it's more their nature to think of themselves. And it's that it's okay because 
they're vulnerable. And when you're vulnerable, you do need to think of yourself a little bit more, right? You gotta protect yourself. But it just gets, it becomes diabolical. So relationships, even in relationships, we can't give ourselves in a relationship without thinking about what we're gonna get out of it. Every relationship is about how she makes me feel. Remember when I, was, I was ranting on you guys the other day? Somebody was talking, you know, we were talking about sex, for, pro, I mean, uh, fornication and stuff, and choosing the right woman and how you can't see because of fornication. And it's like, you, you, when you have sex with a woman, it's about what am I getting? What am I going to get? What am I getting? How does she make me feel? What does she get me? How does she make me feel? Rather than, you know, and this is up for debate because I know we live in a diabolical time, but first of all, how does this relationship bring glory to God? And just like fasting, how does this fasting bring glory to God? And how am I willing the good of the other, which is true love. True love or chastity is willing the good of the other. Now, I know I'm going way off in left field here because I'm giving you various examples about the flaws in our thinking that's causing you to, be, to struggle right now with this fasting. I want you and all of you guys who are in this program and, you, and you're going through the fasting, through the, the, the massive action plan or you know, anything I'm reading here, especially the Massive Action Plan, because the Massive Action Plan is about what? It's about gaining clarity, right? For those of you who don't know, Massive Action Plan is the first step in the King Transformation Program. It's about wiping the slate clean, getting clarity, and restarting your life. It's like a, a rebirth. And so what we're really trying to do here are a number of things, none of which have to do with fitness or aesthetics. Or, I'm sorry, aesthetics. It's ascetic, it's asceticism. We're practicing asceticism, which is what? Self-denial. But it's not about aesthetics, right? It's not about uh, aesthetics. <laughs> it's about getting out of your own way. And right now you're getting in your own way because you're worried. I'm worried about my gains, right? I'm worried about my gains. Now, if you're worried about your gains, then you're going about this all the wrong way. And I would suggest you you don't do it, right? And, you know, of course, you're, you're a little further along in the program, so maybe, maybe I'm, I'm not nailing it for you, but I'll, I'll talk, I'll, I'll hit this from different angles. Massive Action Plan is about self-denial. It, it is about getting something out of it because when we get out of our way, we open ourselves up. And what is an opening? Opening is an a, a, a opportunity to receive. When we fast in this way, and that's why I say three days, when we fast in this way, all of the hangups that we have that are gonna come roaring to the surface. If you've never fasted, the first two days it's gonna be like a beast was unleashed inside you, right? That beast needs to be confronted. That's why it sucks, fasting sucks, especially if you've never done it. And, but all that conversation you're gonna have with yourself, oh, I'm gonna lose my gains, oh, I'm gonna die of hunger, oh, I feel so sick, oh, I'm not gonna be able to work well at work, or people are gonna not like me, or I'm gonna be angry all the time. All that, that is not the true you. That's your fallen effeminate nature and demons that they hate, that demons hate to see you. Demons are fed by food. <laughs> this is funny, and this is a book. I don't know if I really believe this, but there's this book called the um, the the Gospel of of a, the Essene Gospel of Peace, the Essene Gospel of Peace. And some dude says he found it in the Vatican, and it's like one of the laws gospels. And it's Jesus telling him about health. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm interested in health. I don't believe everything the book says, and I, I don't know if that's even true. It could be a BS story, but there's some fascinating stuff in there. And he talks about how fasting. Uh, removes demons from the body and then that when we're fasting and we and we do enemas all the junk that comes out from our gut he called demons right he says that's the demons leaving the body and it's literally like old junk food right but in a way they create turmoil in the body right when you fast and you purge and you finally get all the junk unprocessed food that has been lining the gut wall out by doing enemas like I talk about in the program or salt flushes, all of a sudden you brighten up. Your skin looks different. Oh, injuries start healing. You start like, you become refreshed because there's demons in the body. The fast thing I'm prescribing is about combating your fallen nature 
the world, and the demons. The three biggest distractions to men. The three biggest distractions to men, according to St. Ignatius Brianna Shav. And this is not his words, but it's the first time I heard it, right? But, because it's not just him say that. This is, this is Christian theology. I've heard many different Christians say this. But it's the world, right? These are the three biggest enemies. Is the world, right? What is the world? Instagram, seeing what people are doing, right? Reading comments. That's an enemy for me, too. I catch myself. I get caught, like, reading comments. I'm like, wow. And they, like one comment can ruin my day. Well, that's the fallen world distracting me from my soul goal, right? Because that's what we're trying to uncover in this program. What is your soul? What, are you, what is God really actually calling you to? What is your true vocation? What is your true station in life? But if you're busy looking at the world and when you fast, you literally remove yourself from the world for a number of reasons. Number one, you're not living by the rhythm of the world. What is the rhythm of the world? Eat shit, eat shit, eat shit. Right? That's the rhythm of the world. That's how they keep us as slaves to the system of consumption. Right? Consumption society isn't just, just about the things that we buy, right? Consumer society. You, you hear consumer, you think, oh, big TVs and cars and clothes. No, 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 no. no. That's, not the, that's not the rhythm of consumption. Those are big consumer items. The rhythm of consumption is... always eating stop you stop the rhythm of the world as it's passing through your body when you fast that's powerful enough in itself you separate yourself from the rhythm of the world they're all eating chowing all day long that's number one also number two your fallen nature and this is where the demons start coming out i'm gonna actually let me not use that word demon yet because i gotta come to that your fallen nature, your weakness, your effeminacy, your addiction, right? Your, your addiction to the food, the comfort of the food, the way it makes me feel good, or even just habitual, habitual, just the habitual eating. You mean, it's not, I can't eat, it's time to eat. You'll be surprised. That's, that's another rhythm that we're interrupting. The whole thing with the fasting is a, there's money things, but one of them is a pattern interrupt. Interrupt the pattern of the world. Interrupt my fallen nature. You're interrupting patterns. And then the third enemy are demons, right? And so we already spoke a little bit about that. And if you believe that we are manifestations of a spiritual reality, there are demonic forces that want to see you dead. They hate you. They want to knock you off your course. They want to tell you, that you're no good. They want to tell you that you can't do it because a demon hates more than anything seeing you succeed. And the minute you start reigning in your own will, having self-control, that means he can't have control over you anymore. Right? As long as you are out of control because you're living by the rhythms of the world, that demon's got a grip on you because he knows that your habitual ways. But you start breaking those habits that, he, that demon doesn't have anything to hold on to and he starts freaking out. So he starts whispering in your ear, you're gonna die. Uh, you can't do this, you're gonna lose your gains. And he starts putting all this stuff in your head. Don't listen to him. And so we're fasting to eliminate the enemies so that we can open ourselves up. By the third day, this is not a guarantee, but around the third day, those things start to quiet down your energy begins to subside, and in that stillness, you can hear the voice of God, right? You start to, you start to be more receptive, let me put it that way, right? I want to guarantee you that God's going to come float down on a cloud and tell you something. It's not going to happen. But you're receptive. You're a bit more receptive. You see things you couldn't see before because you're hypnotized by the rhythms, Right? It could be as simple as a book that's been sitting on your shelf for 12 years. But because you slowed down, because the frequency of your mind has settled, you turn one day and you look and you're like, hmm, I've never picked that book up. And you pick that book up for the first time and boom, it blows your mind and it just sets things right. This is what happens. Right? So it's not always God, you know, talking to you like Abraham, it's God starts to be able to, Holy Spirit starts to be able to guide, move your head a little bit because your head's not so busy chewing. <laughs> so if you're fasting for the purpose 
of clarity in, in, in the first part of this program, it, consider these things. It's an act of self-denial. So if you do lose your gains, that's, that, be willing to sacrifice that. Be willing to sacrifice that. Sacrifice that for the greater good. Sacrifice that for some clarity, right? You, you got to give to get, right? It's that way with God. I know a lot of people think that Christ gave and that's all. I don't ever have to give anything again. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to, I don't have to discipline myself. I don't need to mortify myself. I don't have to do good works, right? Protestants are like, you don't have to do anything. Christ did it all. That's not, that's, that's not actually true. 2,000 years of tradition tell us that we have to be an active part of this process. You sacrifice, right? From the beginning, God has required sacrifice, right? No, Jesus was the last blood sacrifice. He doesn't expect us to do the blood sacrifice anymore. But he does want, even Christ says it. He says, unless you die to yourself and be reborn in me, you will not have life. I'm, not, I'm paraphrasing, but he says something like that. Unless you die to yourself, unless you sacrifice. When you fast, you sacrifice and you die to yourself. Let yourself die. Let your ego die. So that's the real importance of fasting for this program. Now, you're in, the, you're in here and, you know, you, you haven't mentioned too much in terms of health, but I also teach you how fasting is a cleansing process, right? Autophagy, setting your metabolism back on course, right? So we're not, we don't have this insulin spike in, and crash, right? So it's secondarily, it's a physiological reset and it's good for your health, right? That's why I, look, I know I look younger. I look younger than I did three months ago, right? I'm fasting, my skin even look better, right? I'm, I'm getting young again, right? People wanna know how that happened. Ellie, how do you get young? Well. Fasting, fasting. Plus, I shaved. I shaved my mustache. The mustache made me look old. All right? My hair growing back. All right? I still got a little bit of thinning right there. <laughs> I think there's a way to get that back, though. We'll figure it out. But either way, you know what? I would rather do... The only reason why I got hair is because my wife and my daughters... I'm listening to the women, right? Like Adam. They say, keep your hair. You look so handsome. I'm like, no, I want to shave it. I might, you might... Don't be surprised if I shave this hair again soon. <laughs> Anyway, enough about that. So I think you. I think that's enough. He says, uh, "Should I wait?" It's up to you. It really is up to you. It depends on the whole. I'll go right back to where we began. Why are you fasting? What are you fasting for? What are you fasting for? And so I gave you two good reasons. Uh, there are many good reasons, right? Developing your discipline. Darren said that he's he's legit. He's right. I just wanted to go a little bit deeper. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war, as well as how it's affecting your health, your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, How Millions of Men Are Fighting Back and Winning the War Against Masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit MakeMenStrongAgain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.